What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay Miniature Rescues Paint, Fail, Learn and Repeat. Today we're going to be focusing on 6 Riders of Rohan from the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. So I decided to tackle this video in two separate parts. The first part being the riders themselves. We're just going to start with those and get those to a good place, but keep them off of the horses so that we can paint them using an airbrush and not worry about getting anything on the riders. I started by priming all of the riders with Vallejo Surface Primer Black, and our first color is going to be Castellan Green. And this is going to take care of all of the cloaks. Using Citadel's Rhinox Hide, I'm going to base coat all of the leather. Keeping the paint pretty thin throughout this section is going to go a long way in giving us that really dark leather look. Bringing in our first wash in Athonian Camo Shade, I'm going to use this to go over the entire model, including the leather. And this is really going to put a little more green into that because this Athonian camo shade is kind of a greenish brown. So we're going to deepen the shadows in the cloak, giving us kind of a guideline to work from. And it's going to bring that green into the leather so that when we work that up, the shadows are still going to match kind of that black green with the rest of the model. After that Athonian camo shade has dried, we're going to start to brighten up those cloaks a little bit using Castellan Green and then slowly introducing a little bit of Nurgling Green as our highlight. Because the wash has settled nicely into the recesses of these cloaks, we're going to use that as our guideline. And what I mean by that is that we're going to thin down our Castellan Green just a little bit and then we're going to pick out all of the raised areas that don't have any shade on them. And then slowly, we're going to start to introduce that Nurgling Green into the mix just a little bit at a time and start to push that value just a little bit on the higher points. Then we're going to come back with pure Nurgling Green and we're going to edge highlight or just kind of highlight the top of any of the sharpest features. Now that our cloaks are done, we're going to bring in some Mornfang Brown as the next step up for our leather. We're going to be using this in pretty much the exact same way that we did on the cloaks, because a lot of that leather has, you know, wrinkles and folds in it, kind of like the cloth on the cloak. So we're just going to pick out the higher points, and we're just going to make sure that that Mornfang Brown is nice and bright on top of those areas. Now, because we're keeping these paints pretty thin, you know, in a nice layer, it's probably going to take a few different layers to really reach that full opacity. So you want to just be careful, you know, maintain brush control and just push that pigment into where you want it to be brightest. Some of these bits are pretty small. So if you do happen to make a mistake, you can always just neaten that back up with the base color that you used before this. So for the leather, that's Rhinox Hide. And if you hit the cloak, come back in with some Castellan Green and then highlight back up with Nurgling Green. To give the shields just a little bit more depth, I'm going to use the Mornfang Brown watered down quite a bit. And I'm going to try and pull that from the middle of the shield up to the top. And I'm going to put a few different layers into that so that we really have a nice transition from that Rhinox Hive to the Mornfang Brown. Coming in with Skag Brown, we're going to do essentially the same thing as the Mornfang Brown, but we're going to keep it kind of focused a little bit tighter. And what I mean by that is that we want to pick out the most raised edges and just highlight that Mornfang Brown just a little bit. So especially on the pants and the gloves, those are going to be the kind of topmost folds. Specifically with the shin guards and the shield, I'm going to kind of roughly sketch in that highlight. Now we want to keep that still on the uppermost areas, especially on the shield, because you know we've pulled some of that Mornfang Brown up to the top. And we're going to kind of do the same thing, but a little rougher just to give more texture to that leather. Rose. 
Now coming in with a little bit of Cadian flesh tone, we're going to take care of any of the skin on each of these riders. Now there's only a couple of models with actual skin showing, like there's a, a few of them with some lips that you can kind of see, but they kind of get buried under their beards and mustaches. The other thing we're going to do with this Cadian flesh tone is go over the leather for a final highlight. We're just going to stipple onto any of the sharpest edges, anywhere where we want it to be, you know, a little more worn down, and that's going to really give a lot more texture to this leather. Coming in with Vallejo Metal Color Steel, this is really going to do a lot of work for us in that metallic department. I was really happy with the way that this metal covered, not only because it's an airbrush ready metallic, you know, it goes on in pretty much one coat, but because of the medium and the other things that are in this particular metal, I found that I didn't need to shade it because a lot of that kind of thinner medium was really settling in the recesses and it was darker. Nurgling green to cover all of the emblems on their shields. A quick wash of Reichland Flesh Shade over the skin. I decided to use Averlin Sunset as a base coat for all of their hair. You'll probably notice that I'm putting this yellow directly over the black primer, and normally that doesn't really work very well. But in, in this case, the Averlin Sunset actually covers nicely in two thin coats. With the contrast paint I and in yellow, I'm going to shade all of their hair. Now I picked this color because it has a nice orangey yellow as a shade, and it really punches up that yellow in the highlights. Vallejo Metal Color Gold is the perfect choice for all of the gold trim and armor on these models. Partially because it's a nice gold that goes on really well, but because it has a little bit of green in it, so it kind of ties that green in with the rest of the armor. Coming back in with Averlin Sunset, I'm going to go through each of the models and pick out all of the most raised hairs that are kind of sticking out. There's a lot of good detail in this hair, so it's not too hard to really come back and just pick those pieces out, and it really makes the hair stand out a lot more. And finishing up this hair pretty much about does it for these riders. So we're going to take a break for a second and then we're going to jump right in to the horses. Before we get to painting the horses, I just want to give a huge shout out to Rock Farmer for sending these models in. They have been really awesome to paint and honestly it, it makes me want to watch Lord of the Rings and you know, paint more model. If you like this video so far, please consider subscribing as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to give a like and leave a comment in the comment section below. If you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing, then I've got a merch shelf just below that has some pretty sweet t-shirts and mugs and stickers. So thank you to everyone who has purchased something from that merch shelf so far. I really appreciate it and it goes a long way in keeping these videos going. Now, on to the horses. So the first thing we're going to do is prime all of these horses white using Vallejo Surface Primer White. 
The first horse that we're going to try and work on is kind of a reddish brown. So starting with Mornfang Brown, we're going to cover the entire horse. Then we're going to come in with Scrag Brown as a top-down highlight. Now this is a pretty minor step up, especially when there's this much Mornfang Brown, but it's really going to give a lot more lightness and oranginess to the top of the horse. Because these horses have a lot of smooth muscle structure, we really want to try and emphasize that. So we want to focus any of our highlights on the topmost parts of any of those muscles that are flatter and, you know, towards the top. And any kind of shadowing we want to do, we want to shoot from below. Adding in a little bit of Vallejo white to that scrag brown, we're going to get just a little bit lighter, kind of pastel color for the top of this horse and we're really gonna focus on the tops of those muscles. Especially with this lighter color, I'm really trying to shoot directly from the top down and I'm trying to catch all of the raised details. So I'm holding this horse sideways and shooting the airbrush directly at the top of it. And I'm lifting it up just a little bit so that it starts to catch some of those raised details on the legs. So you can kind of see, even from highlighting from this mid-tone brown, there's still a good amount of definition in those muscles. Since we really want to define them even more, we're going to put sepia ink into the airbrush and shoot from below. Because this ink is pretty translucent, we can kind of consider this an airbrush glaze. Shooting with a pretty light finger from the bottom of the horse, we're really gonna catch the undersides of those muscles that we missed with that highlight, and it's really gonna start to add a lot more depth into that muscle structure. In looking at a lot of pictures of horses preparing for this particular video, I noticed that most of the horses have kind of the, this dark wrap around their legs. And I know not all horses have this, but in this case, I really like the way that looked and it added a lot more contrast. To take that even further, I took a little bit of black ink and I put it into that sepia. Now this black ink goes quite a long way and covers fairly quickly. It's a really opaque ink, so you have to kind of be sparing with this. And even though there's a lot of shininess that comes with this ink, we're going to hit all of these horses with matte varnish at the end, and that's going to take that away. Now we're going to move on to painting a white horse. So straight from the primer, I'm going to take some sepia ink and do kind of that bottom up shading again. And that's going to start to darken down the lower half and add a little bit of shadow into the white. Cleaning out the airbrush and starting off with some Vallejo aged white, we're going to do a top down highlight with that white. Now, it's going to be the same thing with the brown, where we're pretty much going to cover everything from the top down trying to catch all of that raised detail. The reason I showed the black ink right next to that is that we're going to eventually want to create kind of a gray out of this aged white and hit those lower parts again, those legs. So I only put just a little bit in so that it gave kind of a nice gray tone and, you know, continued the shadowing from below and making sure that those legs were pretty dark. Coming in fresh with black ink in the airbrush, we're going to take care of the bottom of those feet again, and we're going to really try and leave some of that grayish brown showing. We want a nice transition from the black all the way up to the white. I also wanted to add more interest and contrast into the white horse, so I decided to shoot this on the face. Now I pretty much went on either side of the mouth and I tried to leave the nose white as kind of, you know, an extra marking on this horse. I also went over the hair 
and just started to set it up so that I could paint it later with a brush and make that black. Now that our base coats and shading are pretty much done, we're going to finish off the highlighting using Vallejo White. It's important to note that this white is still not a pure white, it is more of an off-white with a little bit of grey in it, but it's also brighter than the white we used previously. I'm going to shoot this from the top down and really try and hit any of the larger flat muscle pieces so that they stand out and leave a little bit of shade in a lot of those recessed areas. Pretty much, except for the details that still need to be filled in on the rest of this horse, he's done. Now we're going to move on to a black horse. We're going to start off with an all over layer of Abaddon Black, and then we're going to add a little bit of that Vallejo White Grey into the mix. Now just a little bit of this is going to take that value from black to that kind of lighter grey, and we're going to try and do the same thing as we did on the other horses really focusing on the top of that muscle structure and shooting from the top down to try and catch those raised details. The nice thing about painting a black horse compared to the white and brown is that you really start to see a lot of that definition really quickly. And it's a lot easier to aim your airbrush and really brighten up those points where you want it to be lighter. I really wanted to punch up the grays on this horse and kind of exaggerate it just a little bit on the lower half. That way we can come back with some black ink and start to reinforce that muscle structure and those shadows. Similarly to the brown horse in particular, we're going to lightly airbrush glaze underneath this horse. And we're going to try and hit a lot of those shadows and really reinforce them so that that muscle structure stands out even more. With these last few bits of shading, this is pretty much going to take care of this black horse. What I found with these models in particular is that really being light with those color transitions and your shading and your highlighting goes a really long way to kind of adding realism to these horses. And in reality, the process in getting whichever color you want, whether it's brown, white, or black, the process is pretty much exactly the same. So if you wanted a darker brown horse than the reddish brown that we got earlier, you would just start with a darker brown and do the same thing. You would shoot a little bit lighter brown from the top and you would add shading underneath to emphasize those muscles. And once again, I want to thank Rock Farmer for sending these models in and I encourage everyone to go down in the comments and thank him as well. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescues Paint, Fail, Learn, and Repeat. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, leave a like, and a comment. I've been Casey, and I will see you in the next video.